Do you ever get really excited about a certain lesson? The lesson I want to talk to you today about is something I'm really excited about that I really get all keyed up about because it's so important to everybody. And so here's what I'm going to tell you. Do you realize that the way that you think and your attitude about life is going to impact you in such a way as to whether your life will be stable or not? In fact, people with low emotional intelligence have only a 20% chance of having a stable, healthy life. And those who practice high emotional intelligence, which I'm going to tell you about what that is, 80% of them will have a well-adjusted life. And I want you to know that it doesn't matter how smart you are, how rich you are, what your daddy did, it doesn't matter. If you are not emotionally intelligent, you will not have a good life. So let's talk about that. By the way, I also want to make mention that you're getting these little brochures in your, in your packets every day. They're great. They may be small, but they're mighty, so make sure you read them and be a great friend and choose to um, give them to somebody you know that could also use them. Well, I want to teach you a new word in case you don't know it. And the word is amygdala. Can you say that? Amygdala. The amygdala is where in your brain your emotions and your memory are. And they are right here. Can you point right here in front of your ears in your head? And we're going to learn a lot about that. And so what was the name of that place that we just pointed to? The amygdala. Emotional intelligence is about knowing what your emotions are. We all have emotions. And it's about learning how to control your emotions so that they don't just drive you. And it can give you setbacks if you don't do it correctly. And it's also about persevering. When there's a problem, can you get through it? And also about how empathetic you are about people and how you read them. When somebody says something that is upsetting, have you ever had that happen? Right away, our brain recognizes it, it registers it, oxygen and blood move that thought into our amygdala. You didn't forget that, did you? It moves it right into our amygdala. And that is in the limbic system. And again, it's about emotions and memory. And when we feel something in our amygdala, well, that's not always a good guide for us to act on. It's a gauge. It might evoke a feeling of anger or sadness or joy, which is a good one, or grief or fear. And right or wrong, it pairs it up with another memory. You know, olives. When I used to eat olives, I would think, I don't know if I really like them. They don't taste bad. I just, you know, I'd see an olive and I'd feel right away this kind of bad feeling in my stomach. <clears throat> well, that's because your amygdala, right or wrong, pairs up any emotion that you have with some experience from your past. And I had to think, what was it when I saw olives that my amygdala was pairing up? And I remembered that there was a dinner that my mom had, and she told me not to touch any of the food. I was probably seven. And I didn't touch it. I smelled it. And I looked at those olives on the table, and I thought, wow, those look really good. And I smelled it really good. And then I thought, well, I'll just pick one up and smell it a little closer. And I saw a hole in that olive, and I put it on my finger. And it fit just perfectly. And there were more than 10 olives, so I put one on every one of my fingers. And I was so proud of how they looked on my fingers that I went to my mother, and I showed her. And she said, Lori, what have you done? Why did you put your hands in there? I told you not to eat anything. I haven't eaten anything, Mom. I just put them on my fingers. She said, don't put those back in the bowl. In fact, you've made them dirty. 
and you need to eat the olives that you made dirty. Well, I was just happier than all get up to do that because I was hungry. So I ate them. I'll tell you, I popped those things right into my mouth. The first three were good. The next four were, I was getting full. <laughs> and you know what? She told me, keep eating them because you made them all dirty and they're yours and we don't want to waste them. And you know what? By the 10th olive, I didn't like olives anymore. <laughs> they made me feel sick. And you know what? I'd forgotten about that, but my amygdala told me about it every time I would see an olive. And it doesn't matter. Let's say that you you see somebody walking towards you with a bat. No big deal, right? They're, maybe they're playing little baby. But all of a sudden you get this gripping fear, and it's because maybe it paired some memory with that. And, it, and all of a sudden you're feeling anxious and nervous. Maybe when you were younger, somebody almost hit you with the bat, or somebody let the bat fly next to your head. You know, knew you almost did. So many times, it's not right or wrong, but we get feelings that are very much an emotion that drives us, and if we react on that emotion, we're in trouble. And that's called the emotional, I'm sorry, the hijacking of the amygdala. Here's what I want to say, and I'd like you to say it with me. The more emotions go up, the less logic we use. You ever had that? Somebody does something and you go, ah! right? Like, remember those cats? Have you seen a cat? Back arch? Yeah, we feel that way. And so many times, if we react when that thought is in our amygdala, will we react in a good way, a respectful way, a kind and considerate way? No. And who can impact our amygdala? You know, if you believe in good and evil, you know that Satan can also use that. And we've seen people who could even kill somebody when their amygdala is really enraged. Now, there are things that happen in our amygdala, and I like to do acronyms. And so I'm going to say that in the amygdala, jot behaviors occur. Could you tell me what the J stands for? Jump for, how did you know? Because you're reading the thing with me. Let's do it. J is for jump to conclusions. O is for overact. And T is take it personally. This is not a good time to react, is it? In fact, probably somebody has told you, if you're really upset, you should wait about 10 seconds. Do you think that would be a good idea? Because in a few nanoseconds, that thought that made you so upset that was in your goes to your frontal lobe. And in your frontal lobe, there's reasoning, problem solving, impulse control, and social behavior. You know, like, do I want to damage this person or whatever? Impulse control, like, do I need to stop it? So when we have it in the frontal area, now we're thinking about logically what we need to do. It's also, you know, this is from a secular study. So I'm going to tell you that your conscience is in your frontal lobe as well. And your conscience is, what should I do and what would God want me to do? And should I pray about this before I react? If we were able to control our emotions and slow it down and delay it, we would say things that are not unkind and irritating. Think about our relationships. Think about our behavior at work. Think about our children who are having temper tantrums, you think about it, we would be able to slow that down. We need to ponder it in a way that God wants us to ponder before we react. And we would have much better relationships. And I'm going to tell you that drugs such as caffeine, ah, that's a legal drug, yes? Marijuana, other drugs, alcohol, they all suppress the frontal lobe. And so people do not have that logical way that slows them down, and so they're more impulsive. And so that's how it gets to us in our Christian life, is when we use substances that probably would not be best so that we could have a healthy emotional life. Here's a Bible verse, and I'd like you to read it with me, okay? And I want you to put some feeling into it, okay? Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Did it say 
stop being angry? Oh, because an emotion is important. It tells you maybe you need some boundaries, maybe you need to run away. So we need to have an emotion so we know what to do. But it says do not sin, which means that what we decide to do when we're having that emotion is where the sin can come in. And it says don't let the sun go down on your anger. Have you heard anybody who's, you know, I had somebody come in and I said, so tell me what's going on. It was a couple and she said, well, 13 years ago, I saw my husband walk out of work with a female co-worker. And I said, oh, was he having an affair? I don't know, but I just don't think that was right. And he said, and every day she's let me know about that. <laughs> 13 years, every day. We have to get rid of things. What happens when we hold on to these things? It makes us physically sick. I said to her, I bet you got stomach aches or headache. Oh, you don't know how bad I felt. I'm like, I probably do. So, and it says, give no opportunity to the devil. Do you get the feeling that when we talk with our, did, did you get that? When we talk with our amygdala, we give an opportunity to the devil. Isn't that sad? Do you want to be run by the devil? I don't want to be a slave to the devil. It says, therefore, let's read this. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lust. Or passions is in another version. In other words, that when we're obeying our amygdala, we are being run by our emotions, which can be influenced by the devil. All right, let's go to another verse. By the way, God has wanted you to be emotionally healthy for a long time. And he's been telling you. Have you ever learned a new word and you go, wow, I never heard that word before. And then all of a sudden you hear it all the time. Well, God's been telling us to do things in the Bible and we haven't been noticing. So let's read this. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be what? Quick to listen. And they should be what? And they should be? Did you know that was in the Bible? Hmm. Let's see if you see this one. Let's read this one. Avoiding a fight brings honor to a man, but every foolish person is quick to argue. Did you get that? When you're quick to argue, where's that thought? In the amygdala. And here's another verse. I wish I could show you how many emotionally intelligent verses there are in the Bible. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Haven't you heard loose lips sink ships, right? Have you ever had something you spew it out and you go, oh, I wish I hadn't said that. Yeah. Well, God will help you speak wisely. And it doesn't matter whether your relationship is with your children or with your grandchildren or with your spouse or with your church member, or with your neighbor, because he does not want us to have unhealthy relationships. We are to be an example of him when we are Christians, and he, we are to show his love to everyone. And so it's very important. And you can imagine that loose lips sing ships in a marriage very fast. There are more people that get um, divorced because of disrespect than there is who get divorced for adultery, addiction, or abuse. Did you know that? Yeah, irreconcilable differences, right? Let's read this one. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Didn't God want us to be emotionally healthy for a long time? And I hope that you see it. So let's go to this next one. 2 Corinthians 5.17 promises a new mind and a new you when you embrace what God wants to do for you. Aren't you thankful that God wants you to have the best life? So let's read this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I want you to know that just knowing this and asking God to change your heart, you actually, if I gave you a score before we began and a score now because you know these things, you would actually score differently. That's because the Lord heals our minds and he changes us. And we need to know that God wants the best for our life. Just plug into the power, which is that God wants you in the best way to act like him. Amen.